Hey everyone, welcome back to our protector series. In this video, we are going to learn how to interact with buttons. I have created a folder that is interact with buttons and also I have created a spec file and conf file. So within the spec file, we have to write our test case. Let's take the scenario. What we are going to do is we are going to get text from this button. So let me identify this. So if I go and click on inspect, I can see that it's in a button tag. So obviously it is a button and here I have ID. So we know that if there is an ID in the DOM, which is going to be unique, we can use that. But in protector, we have a specific locator called button text. So I'm going to use that. So let me copy this text here. And here I'm going to say element. And within the bracket, I have to say by dot button text. So I have to import the by as well. So control space and then button text. And here I have to pass the text of that button. Okay. Now here we are going to retrieve the text, right? So here I'm going to say dot get text. And we are going to use the async and await. So here I can say await and I'm going to store that in a variable. So let's name this as an text. And here I'm going to just log this. So log and here I can say text. Now, whenever we are going to use the await keyword, of course, we have to make the function as async as well, right? So obviously, I cannot run this because we didn't write the code to launch the browser. So I'm going to use the before all here. And here I'm going to say browser dot get. And within that we have to pass our URL. Now we know that if we have the Selenium promise manager as disabled, that is giving the value as false, then obviously we have to use the await keyword before each and every statement, right? So here I'm going to make this as await and also the function as asynchronize, that is using the keyword async. That's fine. Now let's try to run this. So I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to navigate to my folder. And here we are going to say protector, then conf.js. Okay, so I have done a spelling mistake. So let me correct that. Okay, so we got the text and if you have noticed the execution was very fast, right? Yeah, so that is expected. Now in the next one, we are going to get the portion of that button, right? So let me inspect this button and here we can use the get or also we can use the ID or name or the class, whatever we want, right? So I'm going to take the ID now and here we are going to say element dot sorry element and by dot id right but without that we have a shorthand that is using the jquery symbol we can use this to find the id or class name that is using the css locator so here i have to say hash and then followed by the button name i mean the button value right so this is how we used to find the css right so let me copy this and if i inspect in dom I can find that here we are getting one of one. That means this is a valid CSS locator, right? So instead of element by dot ID, we can use this symbol as well. Okay, this is like similar to your find element or this element, I can say, but it is going to take only CSS value. And then we have a method called get location. And location is going to give us the X and Y coordination. So I'm going to store that in a variable. So let maybe location. So obviously we have to use the await as well and the asynchronized here. Here I'm going to say location dot get x, not get x, so location dot x and I'm going to just print that. So console dot log and this one. Similarly, we are going to log the y value as well so location dot y okay 
Okay, so let me clear up my console and run again. Okay, so here we can see that this is our x coordination and this is our y coordination. Now we are going to find the color of a button. So let me go to my UI and inspect this. And here we have ID, name, type, and class, and also the text. So we can use anything, but I'm going to show you how to use the class value using the dollar symbol. So let me copy this and inspect first. So here, obviously, we are getting one match. That means it's perfectly fine. So here we have to make this dot and dot. Okay, so dot represents class. So I'm going to copy that. And here I'm going to say dollar symbol and within the brackets i have to give my value then we have a method called get css value now within the css value we have to pass so here if you see the styling here we can see that this has a background color of blue right so i'm just going to copy this text and i'm going to paste it here so within the single quotes or double quotes we can pass the value right now let me store this in a web element i mean in a variable so let color equal to and we know that we are using this get css value which is going to return us promise right so it is going to return us promise of string so obviously we have to handle that using the await and here i have to make the function as async so let me lock this and here i'm going to say color right so let's run again and check so i'm going to just clear my console and here i'm going to run my script okay so we got the rgba value please remember whenever we are going to use the get css value it's going to return us the rgba value not the actual color name okay so that is how it gets the value from the dom now next we have to find the height and the width of the button right so let me go to my ui and here i am going to inspect this element and here we have id name and as well not this one i think so let me inspect again okay so this is the value so this is the value so i'm going to use the button text so let me copy and here i'm going to say element by dot button text and within that I have to pass the value now here we are going to find the height and width right so for that we have a method called get size and this size is going to return us height and the width okay now again here you can see that it's going to return us promises in protector whatever the method starts with get i can say everything is going to return us promises so let me store this in a variable so let um, maybe size equal to await and here async then i'm just going to lock this so log size dot height and here again i'm going to log size dot width okay now here it says that get text of the button which already we have done here so i'm just going to delete this and let me run again so control l and okay so we got our value so this is this is the size of this um, button 38 and 128 okay so let's quickly recap to find a button we have a specific locator called button text where we have to pass the text of the button now please remember if the button has duplicates text that means two buttons with same name then the first matching element is going to take in our script so make sure that you are not taking the duplicate values and get text is the method to get the text from the button okay we already have discussed what is get attribute now we have discussed what is get text
then we are using this get position that is get location to get the location of the any element and here we have this get css value where we have to pass the css value now to identify what is the css value you can always check in the style sheet so if i go and inspect this button here here we can see that it has a color that is the text color and background color is the background color and here we have button color now if i go and change here so it is obviously it is going to reflect there right so by this way you can identify like what text you have to pass just in case if you don't know the css values names probably you can take that from the dom itself and then we are finding the height and the width using the get size method where it is going to return us height and the width so i hope you have learned something new and probably i can say if you know selenium then each and every method whatever there in the selenium it is going to be exactly same in protector as well the only difference is how you, you are going to handle that using the promises so that's it from my side my name is kaushik see you in the next one